Hi guys, it's Mrs. Leggett here, and this week we're going to talk about Earth's spheres in science. Um, now, you know from math, when I say the word sphere, I am not talking about a flat circle, like on a piece of paper, a two-dimensional shape. When we say sphere, we're obviously talking about a three-dimensional globe shape, right? Like our Earth. This actually isn't a globe of Earth, it is a globe of um, City of London. But still, this works for the purposes of what we're talking about. The reason we, the word sphere is in all of the different spheres that we talk about contained within the Earth is because when we say atmosphere, for example, atmosphere is all of the air in the world. Now, obviously, like I said, it's not a flat 2D shape, and so it's not like we're only talking about the air here or the air here. When we say atmosphere, the air circles or covers the whole sphere of the Earth. That's why the word sphere is in all of the words, right? So when we say atmosphere, it's all the air that covers the Earth or that's in the, the field of the Earth um, before you get to outer space. It's mostly nitrogen and then oxygen and then a little sliver of all other gases. Um, the other spheres that you probably learned about last week in the Mosa Mac unit, uh, we have, let's see, you probably know them off the top of your head. Hydrosphere is all of the water that, again, it's not just here, it's not just here, it's not just the water in Antarctica, it is the water covering the whole sphere. And that's not just oceans and lakes, it's also glaciers, because glaciers are mostly frozen water, right? So that's included in the hydrosphere. Hydro is a Greek root for water. Um, the other ones are lithosphere. Sometimes we also call that the geosphere. I'll tell you the difference in a second. And the biosphere. The biosphere, bio means life. So all of the plant life, animal life, anything that is alive basically is part of the biosphere. Um, lithosphere and geosphere both are all the hard material and the rocks in the world. The difference is the geosphere includes all of the mountains and rocks and the crust of the earth that we're standing on, but the geosphere also includes the hot liquid molten magma and rock that's inside the mantle of the earth. The lithosphere is only talking about all of the hard rock material that is on the surface of the crust and like mountains or rocks that you pick up outside. That is all lithosphere. It does not include the molten uh, rock that's inside of the earth. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now you need to know the difference between all of the different spheres because for this week, for this unit, we're going to do some experiments that you're going to follow along with and you're going to have to decide which spheres are affected by the experiments that we're going to do. Because almost anything you do in life uh, is going to affect more than one of Earth's spheres. For example, when you drive your car, you're affecting both the lithosphere and the, the ground and the crust and, and everything, uh, all of the rock that you drive over. Also, you're affecting the atmosphere, right? Because there's gases and fumes that come from a car and go into the air. Does that make sense? So the point of the experiments will be to show you that the spheres interact with each other and they affect each other. And things that we do, that you do, that I do, that all other humans do, they affect these different spheres for the better and for the worse. So. Um, before we start those experiments tomorrow, where you can start them today, I'm going to show you um, a little graphic that we're going to put in our notebooks. Okay, it's going to look like this. Now, here's the thing. If you already cut out, there was one that we put in Google Classroom. If you already cut this one out and you glued it in and you labeled the different spheres, that's okay. You don't have to do this next one that I'm about to show you, but it's option. You do have to do it if you haven't done any 
yet because it's part of your grade. Um, but if you have done this one and you would like to do this one as the next one as well, I'm going to show it to you. It's kind of cool. I made it and it's like a little, it's like a pop-up book. Okay. You can kind of see it. It folds down. I'm going to show you how to make a pop-up book and we're going to label the different spheres. So this is the sheet that you should have. Now, if you cannot print this out, if you do not have a printer at home, here's what you can do. I'm going to show you um, how I've done this one, and then you can make your own pop-up little book, um, with, and you just need regular paper, doesn't matter if it's lined or blank paper, and let's see if you can make your own infographic inside your science notebook of the different Earth spheres. So here's the labels for the different spheres because once you glue all of these in, um, you're going to cut these out and label them. Now, the first thing you do very first is color it because obviously it's gonna be very hard to color once you have it glued in and it's popping up. You color it first. For the purposes of this, I'm not gonna color it because I'm just showing you how to cut it out and glue it into your notebook so that it makes a pop-up page. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna cut out this part, I used, um, what did I use? Like a plate that's round. And I just, um, I circled the plate about halfway so that I made this like a perfect half circle. Again, you don't have to do it that way. Um, but I'm just gonna cut it out. Now there are little tabs on each of the pictures that say glue tab and fold under. So you need to make sure you do not cut those off because they're the tabs that you will put the glue on to keep it in the book. Okay, so here's the first one. Almost have it. So here's the first one. Here's what it looks like. Now there's a line here. It's not quite in, in half. It doesn't matter though. Now the way that um, you're going to glue it in so that it will pop up is you're gonna fold it backward. So don't fold it so that the picture's on the inside. You're gonna fold it backward so that the picture's on the outside and just try to do it sort of in the middle there and make a crease. The crease is going to go in the middle of your notebook where, you, where it's closed. That's where the crease is gonna go. Now the other things you have to fold back are the glue tabs. Don't fold them, again, you're not folding them in, you're folding them back just like you did with the picture. You fold that one under, it says fold under, or fold back, whichever makes more sense. So see how they're folded under, and this is folded back. Now I'm gonna show you how to glue it in so that when you open the book, it pops up. Because if you don't glue it in quite right, it'll either tear the paper or it just won't pop up. It'll just kind of stay there. So here's my book, okay? Now, when remember in our science notebooks, um, I've just opened to a blank page. You use your next available open page because we want everything to go in order so we can find it again later when we study for tests and things. Please don't just open up your book and then, you know, slap it down right there, okay? But I'm going, so I'm gonna use the next available page, which is about right here. Okay, so here it is. Now, like I said, this crease is gonna go in the crease and you're going to kind of have it pointing down because once the tabs are glued and you open it, it's gonna pop up that way. See what I'm saying? It's gonna pop up that way. So now I'm going to put glue on the tabs that I folded under. So I'm gonna glue there and there, and I'll show you how to stick it in so that it will pop up. So glue tab right on the words where I put glue tab both sides. Okay, now here's the hard part and you might have to play around with it and replace it a few times. So like I said, it's gonna face down. You need to glue this so it's sort of in a V shape. You don't want it to go straight across, you want it a little bit in a V shape so that it pops up. So I'm not going to do it too tight like this. I'm gonna make sure the crease goes in and then I'm gonna put the glue tabs down, uh, sort of in a V shape, so it's a little bit loose. Now I'm gonna try it and see it doesn't pop up very well. If it doesn't pop up very well, you need to adjust it. 
So now I'm going to move it maybe back a tiny bit and more into like a V shape. Let's try again. I want to make sure it folds into the center. Then when I open it, oh, it popped up that time. Now, it's okay if you have to replace it a few times to try and get it to pop up. Because when I did the first one, I realized, okay, it has to, the tabs have to be glued in the right spot. Otherwise, like I said, it's not gonna pop up or it's gonna tear. So play around with it. You want it sort of glued in a V shape, not too tight, but play around with it until when you open it up, it'll stand up straight. Now, there are three pictures that go in here. And you're going to glue them just, you can actually glue them how you want, but I've glued, I've made it so that the other two go in front of this one. So there's a little tree one that goes next with some animals, and then in front of that is where you'll put the water and the lithosphere. And they show you, same thing, it's going to show you where the glue tabs are. You'll fold it again so that the, the middle goes into the crease of the page, and then you'll have to play around with it and glue it in a V shape so that it pops up in front of the other picture. Now the last thing that you'll do when you have all of these colored and cut out and you finally have them glued in so they all pop up nicely, you're going to cut out the definitions and you're going to put them where they are. Uh, you're gonna label them. Basically you're labeling your picture. So let me show you the final product again and then I will sign off so that you guys can do it on your own. Now again, if this is something where you don't do not have a printer, there's a couple things you can do. You can copy my picture as best as you can onto a piece of paper, or it would be really cool if you tried to make your own little picture, okay? You could even make your own little tree and animals. This represents the biosphere, okay? And make sure you have glue tabs. And then I sort of did some, o some ocean waves here and then this is supposed to be the layers of rock like that are in the crust of the earth. See how I wrote down rock layers or strata? And then make sure you have glue tabs on the bottom of that too so that it will pop up. Okay, um, when you are done with it, what you will do is you will send the pictures or share your work somehow with your teacher if it's Mrs. Ba um, or if it's Mrs. Leggett and you are, come to class two days a week, You'll just bring that in and show me what you did. Um, so go ahead, I'll show you the final product again if you wanna pause it and have a look at it for a minute because you're not quite sure. Let's do that. Okay, so see, I've labeled it. I even put some extra notes down here. You don't have to do that. So pops open. See I've, how I've put the labels on there. My tree pops up in the middle and my rock and ocean pops up at the end. Yay, so cute. Okay, I wanna see your work. So um, again, if you're an online student, you're gonna share that work with Mrs. Ba. And we'll start our experiments this week, so be tuned for those videos. Bye.